Hey everybody, it's your boy Ryan. We're here with Jeremy and his lovely wife, Catherine, and they're here to talk about their business, Repurposed Recycling. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Happy to be here. Thank you, Ryan. Well, thank you so much for coming. We're going to be talking about their kind of exploration and how they started their business, what their business is about, and how you, as a viewer and listener, can help contribute to their wonderful cause. That is so great. And, and actually, why don't you go ahead and start with what your business actually is, So, just so everybody can kind of understand their big picture here. Yeah, so we recycle in Guatemala specifically. We're collecting ocean-bound plastic. So we work in coastal communities that don't have any waste collection. They don't have garbage trucks that go around like they do here in the U.S. And so the people in these areas just have to, to burn their plastic, or a lot of it gets thrown into rivers and streams that work downstream until they end up in the ocean eventually. So we're working on stopping that ocean plastic, creating jobs for people that are living in um, extreme poverty in these areas. Um, so are you trying to clean up the plastic before it gets to the ocean or get set, uh, kind of get that stuff that's already out there in the ocean? Yeah, so we are going directly to the source. So we're going to individual consumers, and they can sell their plastic to us. Um, some of the ways that we've started to do this is by implementing a program in schools and churches similar to box top programs that we have here in the United States where kids can bring their, their milk jugs, their plastic bottles to school and put those in um, some bins that we have there. And that can contribute to the money that it costs for them to go to school and for school supplies as well. So, yeah, just to answer the question, it's going directly to the source. Um, so rather than going out into the ocean and collecting and having boats and equipment and machinery, stopping it before it's dumped down ravines and traveling down rivers and into the ocean. Like Catherine was saying, we do focus on stopping it before it gets into the ocean. Um, as we know, there's a lot of plastic that goes into the ocean every year. And a metaphor that's been used uh, somewhat frequently is if you're at your home and you have your house flooding because the tap is turned on and it's overflowing the sink, going everywhere in your house, would you first like start scooping up buckets of water and dumping it out of the house or would you first turn off the tap? And so that's kind of the, you know, we're trying to turn off the tap, stop the flow of plastic into the ocean. No. That makes so much sense, honestly. And that's and like I said, like it was such a good cause when you when you mentioned just like, hey, I'm creating a business that's focusing on basically environmental conservation and recycling all the plastic that's that's out there, preventing the plastic that's already out there from getting out there in the first place. And that's such a smart way of doing it too, is kind of going to the source. How did you guys come up with this idea or like did it just come like out of nowhere? Did you receive inspiration? Tell me it was an angel. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I lived in Guatemala, um, took several trips down, took a trip in high school. Uh, my uncle did a lot of um, humanitarian work down there. He built like a daycare center. And then I went down when I was a senior in high school to help him kind of run that and do other humanitarian projects down there. And Always kind of from that point on knew that I wanted to help people in poverty, wanted to be involved in some way. And then I took another humanitarian trip to Fiji and kind of saw firsthand a lot more trash than I expected. And uh, that's when I really started thinking about and focusing on, you know, this this shouldn't be this way. Like there shouldn't be trash on these yeah. beaches. There shouldn't be trash in the ocean. Uh, what can we do to, to fix it? And started looking for causes and organizations I could be involved with and didn't really find any great places to volunteer. Um, so started thinking about how um, I could go about trying to fix it myself. Wow, that's very powerful. Yeah. And do you guys only work in Guatemala or are there any facilities or resources here in the States that you guys are using? So currently our only operations are in Guatemala, but we're hoping... Um, within the next year or few to expand to other countries. It's, as we all know, a major problem worldwide. Pretty much in all third world countries, there's not the infrastructure that is needed for waste management. Wow. Yeah. And that's, and that's so true. Like recently uh, I've started to go birding with, uh, with one of my roommates and it's a real beautiful and inspiring experience uh, to be out there in nature, but something that's so 
kind of demoralizing and sad is when you go out to the lake specifically to see all these waterfowl uh, kind of gather and breed that you just see trash just lined across the the entire lake and the entire shore and even when you're out in forests you, no matter it seems no matter where you go there's always some sort of trash or litter that's just not been recycled and it breaks my heart honestly to see because it's not just us that we're hurting by doing that, but we're hurting all of this wildlife out there as well. We're harming the natural beauty that is this world. And what I really like as well is uh, that you said, Jeremy, that you got this idea while uh, going out in Guatemala and while you go out and talk with all of these people and get to know these people and go to these different places. It just goes to show how important it is for us to get outside of our homes, put the phone down, uh, disconnect and connect with those around us instead of the electronics and connect with nature so that we can kind of find a bigger purpose in this world. And so that's really, really cool that you guys were, uh, were able to do that. Um, so, how big is your operation right now? How long has this company been up and running? Or what are some difficulties, I guess, as well that you guys might be uh, running into uh, with this operation of yours? Yeah, so we launched in June 2021. Yep. So it's just been a little less than a year. And that was when we first um, opened our first facility in Guatemala and started hiring, employing individuals down there. Yeah, and uh, since then, currently we're collecting about 4,000 pounds a week, and we have about 50 collectors. And uh, over the past year, we've heard some incredible stories. So so we're growing pretty quick there. Um, you you're talking about um, difficulties. So some of the difficulties we've had, um, you know, there's been a lot, honestly. Like, it's definitely uh, a lot of work trying to run something in another country. And we luckily have a guy down there in Guatemala that we trust a lot. And he's really great at um, what he does. And he's very proactive and kind of running and managing everything down there for us. And so we work directly with him. And did you meet him when you were down there in Guatemala yourself? Yeah. So when I was living down there and then just in trips that I've taken down, I've, I've kind of met up with him, stayed in touch with him and he reached out to me about helping him start a gym down there um, years ago, and uh, I didn't know if I really wanted to do that. I didn't, you know, I was in college and didn't have the money to invest in starting a gym down there. And so, uh, but yeah, I always kind of stayed in touch with him, and it, it proved to be a, a very valuable relationship. But you did have the money to invest in a recycling <laughs> company. What kind of investments did you have to? Uh, put down in order to open your business out there? Yeah, I would say um, it's definitely a lot cheaper to start a business in a third world country. Uh, everything is, you know, rent, like we paid, you know, for the first six months, um, we only paid $75 in rent every month for a house and some land. And we were able to store lots of plastic on that. And like, there's no way, you know, in the U.S. that you can okay rent anything for 75 bucks a month, you know? Right. Yeah, maybe like a toaster. <laughs> <And that's it. laughs> Seriously. <no. laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely been easier there. But um, some of the legal fees, like with getting things registered with the government, is more expensive than here in the U.S. And, you know, that's um, kind of an interesting thing that, like, it, it, in a lot of ways, it can be easier legally to start a business here in the U.S., but yeah, as far as investment, you know, it hasn't been too bad. Like, and we've bought some some equipment and some machinery that we are getting installed. That's going to help us um, grow and be able to process and make sure that everything that, that we collect gets recycled. Interesting. And so, I imagine you said that you know costs would be not be as much down there, but I imagine it'd be much harder to kind of direct kind of focus and workflow down there because, you know, you're thousands of miles away and, you know, you can't, I don't know, maybe you do control on the day-to-day -day what they do, but it seems like at least with how busy I know you are, maybe to communicate with these people on the daily, like, or like hourly, you know, why are you sitting down? Like, well, get up there and save the planet. What are you doing? Or like, what did you do today? Why did you just have a party? It's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it just seems, yeah. it seems a lot harder to do that. 
And so how do you guys uh, kind of go through those hurdles or what are some things that have worked for you in managing something so far away? Yeah, so we, I mean, we have an open line of communication with our operations manager down there, and but we also give him the autonomy to decide what he's doing on the day-to-day. And to date, working with him, I think we have just under 65,000 pounds of plastic collected. Wow. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Nice. Yeah. And I definitely hope that they feel uh, that appreciation that you guys have for them um, all through school. I uh, wanted to be a computer scientist, and then once I got employed, I immediately start to started to feel like I wasn't as important as I want as I wanted to be, or important to the company as I thought I would be. And so, I really hope that uh, you guys are able to kind of let them know uh, that you do appreciate them. And something that I'm noticing also is that you guys work just like great as a team, and it's something so again inspiring. To, to see uh, is just a couple who is married, but also are you uni- and so united in life, but also united in this purpose and in this company. Uh, it's something that, as someone who's saying, it was constantly worried. Like, well, what if what if I want to play D and D, and my if my wife doesn't want to play with me? You know, so <laughs> it's it's really interesting and cool that you guys have found this thing, this project to work on together. So, Jeremy, is there any place that? Anyone who might be listening who wants to help can go to contribute to this cause, whether that be financially or some hands-on work. Where can they go? Where can they find you? Yeah, uh, probably the best place is uh, just our website, repurposerecycling.com. You can look us up on Instagram and Facebook also. And we sell bracelets. So the main way that you can get involved is um, we sell bracelets that help fund the collection of plastic down there. Um, every bracelet will fund the collection of 10 pounds of plastic or more and create change and impact in these lives. So um, that's the best place to go if you want to get involved. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for, for coming and talking about this great company that you guys have started. And thank you so much for, uh, on behalf of everyone, the work that you've done to help clean up the, the rivers and oceans, waterbeds uh, around around Guatemala and hopefully uh, in not too many years in the future around further reaches of the world. And um, thank you everybody for watching. If you guys want to donate or follow any of those sources, we'll try and put those links up there on the page so you guys can uh, very easily click and access those. 